This is North Hall, and it's the first fully renovated dorm uh, when the college reopened. We basically, this building was built in around 1852. About the only original thing left on it is that brick veneer, but everything else has been upgraded since. So in 2011, we, uh, we gutted it and, and completely renovated it. Uh, and when we began thinking about this building and, and thinking about sustainability and energy efficiency, um, and we had the, the example of the Glen building and the trail side already on GEO, so uh, we know that the most efficient heating cooling system you can put in a, a commercial building like this is geothermal. So 25 boreholes were put out in this horseshoe area and they feed into this building and I'll take you down into the mechanical room and I'll, I'll show you the system down there. Uh, the other thing we, we knew is that geo is all electric, right? And the advantage of going all electric is twofold. Uh, you can offset that electric with solar. Thus, you see the 50 kW uh, solar panels on the roof. And that's providing about 13% of the building's energy needs and helping us offset that electric. And the other great advantage is that we get rid of natural gas, right? So we don't need the natural gas to heat. Uh, we, we do have um, natural gas domestic water heaters in there currently, but you'll see as we go and tour other buildings, we, we got rid of those as well. Um, and so now the central geo uh, that's serving three buildings now on campus also provide the domestic hot water, also heat our pool and spa and that sort of thing. But what you're looking at here are the geothermal pumps. So from that bore field, this is what's circulating the water to and from our bore field out on the horseshoe, all right? And then this header here, you've got the supply here. And right now we're looking at about a temperature of water, about 62 degrees going into the building and coming back out at about 64 degrees, right? So about a two degree differential. So with the geothermal, it's using the ground's inherent heating capacity and or cooling capacity, depending on which season you're in. Um, but the water is carried up through, there's distributed uh, geo pumps throughout the building. So every dorm room has a geo pump. So the water goes through every one of these uh, heat pumps in the rooms, picks up that cooling, but with each heat, heat pump, it then takes that water, that 62 degree water, chills it down to about 45 degrees, enough to cool the room and the building with, and then sends it back on the return loop, carrying all that heat with it that it passed through the coil. It's taking all that heat and dumping it back in the ground. So all summer long, you're taking heat out of a building, dumping it into the ground out there. It's heating up the ground. Um, and therefore, when you get your seasonal change and you start heating, you've heated up the ground and now you're bringing very warm water back into the building to, heat, to help assist um, heat the building. So that's what makes it efficient because you're using that inherent energy from the ground to help you heat and cool. And what does the uh, coil or the system that is in the ground itself look like, the actual? So what you have is out there, there's 25 boreholes. They're drilled about a uh, six inch diameter. And what they do is they run a closed loop system. So they run plastic pipe down into the borehole, comes back up, goes to the next well, and they have, a, have them in series. So there's probably a group of six boreholes in one series. And then they all come together in a geo vault out in the ground Right, so you get into the geo vault, all those pipes come in with valves. You can isolate a, a specific circuit if you have a leak and so forth. But those six then come back in to this building and this pipe, one big pipe system, right? How much maintenance now, here, here? Uh, you have to spend a lot of time? Well, mostly what, so far since, since we opened the building in 2012, it's been 
Uh, we have an outside firm that does twice a year seasonal maintenance on all the units. The in-between quarters, my maintenance department changes filters, um, but not much else. And the equipment's still fairly new, so we really haven't experienced many problems. So as it ages, you know, equipment maintenance will get more intense. Uh, again, because there are 58 separate heat pumps. Um, the one hanging right behind your head, that's, that's one they're using just to heat and cool this space, right? So there's one in every dorm room, and then we have central systems that get the hallways, corridors, kitchen area, and that sort of thing. There's two pumps there, that's for our domestic water. And of course, your VFDs help you pump more efficiently. Uh, they just ramp up and down based on the building demand. So you hear them kick up when the kids all take showers in the morning and then they ramp back down when they're done, that sort of thing. Okay, some of the features I wanted to talk about inside the building. Um, right away, we can look at the lighting system. We converted uh, what used to be T12s in here prior to the renovation, all to T5 fluorescents. And then we put in building controls, lighting controls in the building. So they're on timers and at midnight they go to like half light, so 50% down. And then we also put uh, occupancy sensors in the closets and restrooms um, uh, to keep the lights off when nobody's in there. This building, believe it or not, I mean, again, I told you it was 1852, but from that time through all the renovations it's had, they never insulated the outside walls. So, and that's another uh, improvement we've made to the building is we put two inch thick insulation on all the outside walls on this building. Um, it also has a, a building automation system for the heating, heating and cooling. So we're able to go in and set schedules. Uh, we're able to turn things down during breaks, like when the students are on break currently, or for Christmas shutdown, uh, control the temperature that way. We set a median temperature. Right now this building is set at 74, and students in their rooms with a thermostat can deviate from that three, three degrees plus or minus. If you look up at the wall, you see we did get a lead gold plaque for this building for all the energy improvements uh, and sustainability measures we, we placed on this building. Uh, we're real proud of that. We also emphasize recycling here at the college. We separate our streams. So students, staff, faculty, all, uh, we educate uh, about recycling and we separate our white paper our office mix, plastic bottles, cans, tin cans in the kitchens, glass bottles, cardboard, everything gets separated. Do you guys compost? We also compost, yeah. Yep, they compost from the kitchens and all the kitchenettes go out to the farm for the farm use. Of course, going forward, we want to be concerned about ADA accessibility. Uh, didn't have an elevator before we put an elevator in. This particular elevator, uh, made by Coney Elevators, uses two-thirds less energy than the standard. This is um, on a track system, and um, it's driven by a motor, whereas your other systems are hydraulic. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the most efficient elevators you can use. So we've duplicated this, and we've been putting Kone elevators in all the other renovated buildings. This building didn't have a kitchen and cafeteria before, so this was one of the new upgrades. Um, we had shut down the student union and it wasn't a building we really wanted to renovate. It was actually too big for us to utilize. I mean, our first year students, there were 32 of them. Um, and now we've grown to about 270 with this fall entering class. But um, since we didn't have a main central cafeteria anymore, um, we decided to put a cafeteria kitchen in here. There's also one in Birch Hall. Uh, and we'll continue that model going forward. The next dorm we build, however, will, will be the central kitchen. So it'll be a much larger kitchen and we'll build a seating capacity into it of about 175. Also here in the kitchens, when we're buying equipment, um, we're, we're looking at Energy Star rated or high efficiency gas appliances. Um, and that also helped us get points for lead. So this is typical of all floors. We, we have a center lounge area for the students with a kitchenette. Um, little study nooks at the end of each hallway and then uh, the showers and restrooms to either side of the of the hall. Um, I, again with all of our um, 
water. Uh, we installed, you know, um, low flow faucets, um, toilets, all that to conserve water and, and earn points for that as well. And now I want to take you up in the attic because that's where some more cool stuff is. My maintenance guys love this space, you can see why. It is conditioned and it's nice and open. Um, you can get at the equipment fairly well. So if you look at all the, look around and see all the insulation, we added quite a bit of roof insulation here, uh, put a new roof on. And like I said, we insulated the exterior walls as well. Um, these hanging units are just for the attic. And then we have these central units here that provide the heating and cooling in the um, kitchen and in the corridors of the building. Watch your step here. If you look up here, these are the inverters for the solar array on the roof. It's a, a 50 kilowatt system, so it's providing about 58,000 kilowatt hours of electricity every year. And each one of these totalizes, and you can tap on the screen, and it'll scroll through and tell you how much uh, energy it's produced, as well as how much carbon you've avoided. 